Hey guys and welcome to this video. So Christmas is coming up and a lot of you guys probably want a new computer for Christmas but you maybe don't know exactly which parts you should get because there are so many out there. Now I put together three parts lists for you at three different budgets so there is something in there for everyone. So linked down below is my PC part picker list and here I have all my builds registered. And today we are gonna look at these six builds here. You can see that I have a US and a Germany version as not all parts are available in both places and on some parts there is a better deal in the one place so the like the these two and these two and these two, they are really similar builds, but I just adjusted some things to make them fit better. So let's start at the bottom with the $530 gaming PC. As you can see, I went for an i3-6100 at 3.7 GHz. That's like from the Skylake platform, it's a really decent chip. Um, you could say you want to go for AMD, but I wouldn't just suggest that because there is no upgrade path whatsoever on AMD. But if you buy this processor now, you can still upgrade to an i5 or i7 later without buying a new motherboard or any other new parts. So that's a really good investment where you have headroom to grow in. As this is a non-overclockable processor, we don't need the Z170 chipset so I went for a cheaper motherboard with the H110 chipset from MSI here. It's a nice black board which will look great in your system and it has all the basic features you will need. For memory I went with 2x4 gigs, so 8 gigs in total from this Mushkin black line. It looks decent as it has a heat spreader on there and it's cheap, so that's why I went with this one. For storage, I only put in SSD right here because many of you probably have a hard drive laying around somewhere or you can borrow something. So I only put in a 240 gigabyte SSD, which is gonna be plenty enough for all your programs and some of the smaller games. And then if you need more space, you can always add a hard drive later. For the video card, I went with the RX 470, as it is the best bang for your buck at this prime price point you can get. I put the MSI version as, I wouldn't recommend the reference version at all because it's noisy and it's hot. The MSI version is really good and it looks decent as well with the white and black color scheme which matches almost everything. For the case I went with the Corsair Carbide SPEC M2 Micro ATX tower case. Despite the long name it's a solid case, it looks nice in my opinion. It has some LED fans so there's gonna be some lighting, it has a size panel window and it's only 50 bucks. The power supply I basically looked for the cheapest 500 watt power supply with 80 plus certification that is from a reputable brand and I came up with the EVGA 500 watt um, power supply. It has the usual ugly catchable master cable but at this price point you won't get anything else. Then in total at the time of recording this PC will cost you 500 $26 if you buy at all the cheapest locations. Just gonna quickly go over to the um, Germany version. I have the same processor and SSD. The MSI graphics card I couldn't find available here in Europe so I put in the XFX Radeon RX 480 which is really similar just from a different brand and another power supply as well because the one I put in in the US isn't available here. Now let's go up to the $900 budget 
this is gonna be your all-around PC that can play all games at 1080 at pretty much maximum settings and if you're a gamer this is probably all you need. You can couple it with a nice 144Hz monitor and enjoy some really smooth gameplay. So for the processor I picked the i5-6600K. You could go with the 6600 but the K isn't that much more expensive and besides overclockability you also get some more frequency out of the box so I think that's a good deal you should take. And as the higher tier models, the overclockable, don't come with an integrated cooler, I put in the Cooler Master Hyper 212, the Plus version here and the Germany build it's the Evo version. Doesn't matter too much, if you have something lying around you can take that. It's just a cheap cooler which is reasonably quiet and does its job. The motherboard I picked here is the ASRock Z170M Pro 4S Micro ATX board. I picked this one because it has a Z170 chipset, so you can get some overclocking out of this chip. And I guess, I haven't tried it, but I guess you can get it to 4.0 GHz pretty easily. And so you can get some nice additional headroom there. So it's re reasonably cheap at under 100 bucks and it has like the basic features you will need. The memory I went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX. I'm running those in my own system right here. They are great, I haven't had, had any problems with them. They are black and look good. For the SSD I took something a bit bigger so you can put almost all of your games on there. Like with 480 gigabytes, you should be able to put a decent sized Steam library on there and you won't necessarily need a hard drive besides it. Of course, if you like storing pictures and movies and whatever, you can always add a hard drive to it now or later. At the same price, you could get uh, also a, a 240 gigabyte SSD with a one terabyte hard drive. If you like that better, that's gonna run you about the same. The video card, I picked the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte model, which is pretty much expected, I guess, at this price point. Um, make sure that you get the 6 gigabyte version because 3 gigabytes of VRAM is gonna be limiting really soon I guess because that's not really that much and the 6 GB version isn't that much more expensive and newer games will require more and more VRAM so make sure to get the bigger one. I picked the one from EVGA because it is solid, EVGA products are known to be really good quality so I recommend that one. For the case I picked the Fractal Design Mini C with the window. It's like the all other Fractal Design cases, a really nice design, understated and it take, takes a lot of uh, similarities with the Define S, but it's smaller so it fits the Micro ATX motherboard nicely and it has a window. It's, in my opinion, it's a really nice case. It's also 80 bucks. You can get cheaper cases. If you don't mind how your PC looks, then you, you can get the cheapest case you can find and put your stuff in there. But I really like this case and at this price point, I think it's reasonable for this build. The power supply, it took the same one as in the previous build as it still provides enough power and we don't really need to put more money in it. If power saving is really important to you, you can go with a different one that has maybe an 80 plus gold certification, but this one has 80 plus certification as well, so it's not that bad. And just quickly going to the Germany version, as I already told, I picked the Hyper 212 Evo here. I also uh, had to pick a different SSD because the other one is really expensive here and this one is cheaper. I don't know why, but I just changed it out really quickly. And the case, I took a different one because the 
Define Mini C is rather expensive here. It's over 100 euros. So I took the Bitfinex Ages Core, which I don't know why the price isn't showing right now, but it's like um, 60 bucks or something like that. And also again, the same different power supply. And then going up to the 1750 around dollar PC, this is gonna be more targeted to the enthusiasts among you, which like something that looks aesthetically pleasing and is a bit more than just the average PC. I, in this PC, I made sure that everything looks nice and matches and I didn't take necessarily the highest end hardware you could get for that price, but I wanted to build something that is nice to look at and really solid. So for the processor, we have the i7-6700K, which is the um, i7 that you can get right now, Skylake, um, all you want and it's gonna be cooled by the NCXT Kraken X61. It's a AIO liquid cooler. It also has like an RGB light, which will you can control with the software to match your color scheme you want. It's a really solid cooler and you can mount it in the top of the case. The motherboard, I picked something a bit more special here, the MSI Z178 Crate Gaming. This motherboard looks a bit um, more appealing in my opinion. It has some white accent with, which you can see uh, is about the color scheme I'm going for, black with some white accents. Um, I really like the appearance of this board. If you aren't too much into this appearance, you can get a different one. But it also has some very nice features and it isn't like extremely expensive, but it has the Z170 chipset and all the other features you will need and some more. For memory, I went with 16 gigabytes, of course. Again, Corsair, Vengeance, LPX, not some things, not anything special there. Nice black, clean memory that just works. And again, in this build, I went with SSD only because now you can get really uh, rather cheap SSDs that are really big. I put a one terabyte Samsung 850 Evo in there. It isn't the cheapest one terabyte SSD you can get, but I'm running some, some Samsung 850 Evos myself. I've been running them for over a year and I have not had a problem at all. So I can really recommend this one. It also looks nice. And it's gonna get you some really nice storage that is big enough for your entire Steam library. And if you need more space, of course, you can always add some hard drives or you can build yourself a NAS. The video card, I went with the EVGA 1070 for the win gaming is with the ACX 3.0 cooler on there. It matches the white and black color scheme really nicely with the um, silver accents and it also has RGB lighting in the front of the cooler which will shine down in your case. You can set it to whatever color. You can match it with the Kraken cooler and this will look really nice in your build. In my opinion it also performs really well. If you really want the best of the best, you can go for the 1080 for the win. It's like an extra 100 to 150 dollars. You could cheap out on some of the other components, get the 1080 and at the same budget, but I took the 1070 because unless you're gaming at 4K or some other crazy resolution, you won't need more than a 1070. Pretty much all games that are out right now will run at max settings at over 60 FPS with the on in like a 1080 monitor with the 1070. So you don't need a 1080. The case here is a bit of a special one. I didn't want to just take a regular um, cheap case which looks 
okay, I wanted to take something that will take your setup to the next level and is really nice to look at. So the Fantex N2 Evolve ATX with tempered glass is in my opinion about the nicest case you can get at the moment. It has tempered glass panels on both sides, aluminium build all around and it looks absolutely stunning. It's rather expensive at almost 200 bucks, but in my opinion that's absolutely worth it. For the power supply, I beefed it up here a little to the Corsair RX 650 watt. This is 80 plus gold certified and most importantly it is fully modular and has the nice black flat cables from Corsair. On the Phantom Evolve ATX there is tempered glass on the back panel as well. So you will be able to see your cable management and the black flat cables will look a lot better there. And will be easier to manage as well. And here I also put in an LED strip so you can illuminate your components and it's a bit more visible through the tempered glass side panel. Just took the Bitphoenix Alchemy Connect LED strip in white. 60 centimeters will be enough to wrap it around your case. Maybe not quite, but enough to light up a good portion of your build. In Germany, this build runs a bit more expensive, but I could take almost the same parts. Only the motherboard I had to change out because I couldn't find it here. So I took the ASUS Z170A motherboard. It's with white accents as well, just from a different manufacturer and it has really similar features. So in my opinion, there's not much difference there. So that was it. I hope you found something that interests you in there. And I hope you can get maybe one of these PCs. And if you do, please send me a picture to the Twitter or Instagram account down below where you can also check out some behind the scenes. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below and also leave a comment if you want to see more videos like this. So thanks for watching and until next time.